Trader Tina here once again from shortmetina.com with my daily recap. Uh, take note that the recap that I'm doing right now is actually occurring before the market close it's, closes. It's about uh, a little after 11 Eastern time here. I'm not sure I'll be able to actually get to recap in the markets later on in the evening. So I said, let me just do it now. Um, I'm going to try to make it short. I have about uh, five stocks that I want to go over. Obviously, we're going to kick it off at ticker AAL, American Airlines. News just came in that American Airlines, uh, well, before we get into there, I mind my manners. Uh, thank you for stopping by and thank you for listening to this video uh do me a solid thumbs up if you like it comment in the comment section make sure you're subscribed at our youtube page at short Metina if you have not already done so anyway so back to aal um it just came in that they actually suspended all flights from U.S. to China starting today until February 13th for the next two weeks, I guess, on concerns of coronavirus. Um, and I think that that's a safe and responsible decision. I know a lot of folks are saying, well, you know what, This is their reaction is a bit overblown. It is just, quote unquote, the flu uh, or a, you know, a variation of the flu, nothing to get alarmed about. But I think it's very responsible for the company to at least just assess the situation, right? There's nothing Nothing wrong with assessing the situation I think uh, at least me personally it's better and I probably shouldn't be interjecting my views here but uh, it might be just better to lose some money in the shorter term to you know potentially save lives in the longer term right this is just temporary but even so if you look at American Airlines chart right this is a daily chart dating back to September of 2015 but just let's pay attention to essentially what happened when the stock peaked in January of 2018 a little short of $60 it's been in a perpetual decline right and what's a decline a decline is characterized by lower highs you can see it here lower highs took a real big hit um, early 2018 lower highs lower highs lower highs and it hasn't seemed to have broken that trend um we can say here around late last year, October to now, it seems as though the stock may have may be stabilizing a bit, essentially trading sideways, which is usually an indicator that, well, it's resting, which is a good thing uh, for two things, either a potential continuation, which means it'll continue to fall down, or it's going to reverse trend. What's happening right now, I do not know, but... Uh, yeah, sorry about that. Busy city, a little noise overhead. Um... Anyway, so again, in a decline back in uh, February of 2018, it seems that the stock is stabilizing a little bit, although we're off 3%. If you're long looking to initiate a position, right now it's trading at 26.87. Can it go further down? Absolutely, um, and it probably will. So I would be paying attention to this red line here. Let's call that around 24. That's sort of where I believe support comes in. If it can hold that line, there's a potential for a reversal. So uh, being off, Oh, I didn't do the calculation, but clearly it's probably over uh, 50%. Being off 50% from the highs of around 60, there's definitely that room for uh, a potential um, reversal in trend. But right now, I leave the stock alone. What else? All right, and let's uh, talk about the SPY. It's off 1.5%. Um, almost seems as though it's a repeat of what happened uh, uh, this past Friday, and it might be setting up uh, for a, a down Monday uh considering that's exactly what happened uh, last Friday. You know, we had that pullback, and then we had the gap down on Monday. So today, Friday, we're having the pullback. It's shaping up like we might actually have a gap down on Monday. Be careful, be cautious. But uh, for those that have not been around here, and this is the first time you're here, uh, let me just let you in on what I think about the SPY and the overall markets, right? So if you look at this chart, it's a daily chart dating back to 2018. Around here, around October of uh, 2019, late last year, when we actually broke above this resistance level, let's call that 293 to 295, I've been maintaining and I do daily videos. And at one point I was um, recapping the SPY literally every single day for, I want to say, an entire year. Um, I initially said, well, if we can get above and maintain a break above resistance of 293 to 295, I can see the markets getting to around 328 to 330 before it kind of like tops out, uh, before it reverses a bit. That actually happened. I was projecting that it was going to happen ending of 2019. It actually happened at the beginning of 
2020 where the market topped out at, at 332 and now we've pulled back I, I didn't do the calculations I want to say maybe about two to three percent I think that this is healthy healthy and it's necessary I think three percent might be a little bit it might be a little uh, I want to say it might be not enough of a pullback I was gonna say it's a little too little but that doesn't make any sense um, but uh so we're pulling back here i think that that's good i think that that's healthy if we can just again i'd rather a, a fast move than a slow move so if we can open up down on monday like five or six percent i think that would actually be great if it's not that if we just kind of like do two percent this week next week etc that's also fine too but we definitely need to pull back a little before we can uh continue that overshoot and i see the market getting to around uh 400 in 2020 in a healthy manner if we can get that pullback now, all right? So learn to take advantages of pullbacks, what else? All right, and then we have shares of Roku tumbling off 7% on the day. This is a daily chart. I mean, the stock, in all honesty, it's been an, a complete monster, right? Recently hitting as high as around at 176.55. Uh, we've pulled back considerably since then, notably today at down 7%. I think there's some sort of dispute going on with Fox. You see a quote here of 121.76. Again, bear in mind that where we actually close at might be very different from what you're seeing right now because I'm doing this video um, prior to market close. Anyway, uh, and I, again, the, the stock is up. The stock is up a lot uh, since IPOing. So if it if it decides to tumble um, more points heading into Monday, which it's looking like it will, because uh, even though again uh, the trading day has not end, we're trading at session lows, um, uh, close to session lows. Session lows right now is one twenty one fifteen. We're at 121.61. So you might experience more of a pullback. I think that that's fine unless you jumped in all the way up here and you're losing a lot. But if you're someone on the sidelines looking to get long, you might actually get an opportunity to do so um, if the stock can pull all the way back to 80. And don't discount that because if the overall market pulls back, more than likely this is going to get dragged down with it. So caution is the name with ticker ROKU. What else? All right, so let's uh, cap it with ticker NNVC. It's a daily chart up about uh, 28% north of 30% on the day. You see a quote here of $15.45. Um, and so just to sort of sum up what I've been saying about ticker NNVC and some others all week is that a good way to determine uh, whether or not a stock can still sort of continue that momentum into the next trading day is to pay attention to how the stock opened up, how the stock closed. So yesterday we closed at $12. We were actually up in after hours. I want to say we got to around $15, maybe even $16. Pre-market today, the stock was running. We were up, uh, I, I wanna say somewhere around 17, and then we opened up today at $18.20. So if you uh, take that into consideration and just sort of like juxtapose that against what I've been saying about paying attention to the open and close, you should know that today would have been a decent day with ticker NNVC because it opened up at 1820, whereas yesterday it closed at around $12. So opening up considerably higher than the previous day's close should have told you that it still had some momentum left in it. Uh, it went as high as 1920 yesterday when I did the uh, video. I said, well, if we uh, retest the most recent high of 1777, which occurred on January 27th, we had a good shot at getting to 20. Didn't quite happen. We didn't get to 20, but we got very very close, $19.20. So if you went long, another huge win in your book. Um, so we're here at $15.25. In my opinion, trading a little too close to session lows of $14.75. That's not necessarily good. Uh, that's not a great setup heading into Monday. But take note again that it's only around 11 something uh, Eastern time. The market has not closed. This can reverse. But if it continues this sort of trading action uh, for the remainder of the day, more than likely we're going to end the day red. And that might not be the best setup heading into Monday, all right? So that's sort of it. I hope that makes sense. If it doesn't, please comment in the comment section. I'm usually live. I'll answer your questions. Not necessarily uh, right away because I get a lot of questions often, so I try to handle them 
um, when I can. All right, so we're going to cap it there. Tina here once again from shortmetina.com. If you enjoyed any portion of that video, uh, do three things for me. One, comment in the comment section uh, and like the video again. Once you do that, it sends to the algorithm that it is an enjoyable video and it'll send it out to other traders like yourself that are in positions such as NNVC, Roku, Spy, AAL. Uh, so do yourself a favor, help other traders out by liking and comment. That's the first thing. Two, if you enjoyed the video, you want to hear more of it, uh, I upload at various times. You can see today it's coming before the market uh, actually closes. Sometimes it's after, uh, you know, I try to get to it when I can. If you want to be notified, make sure you're subscribed to our YouTube channel at Short Me Tina. And this is the last thing right now on our website. We're hosting a free 14-day trading course. I've been trading for about 20 years, and that course, is, uh, you know, it's about 14 days and it, it, it basically talks about the salient points or the important things that I've learned trading for 20 years. Had I have known uh, a lot of what I'm telling you in the free trading course, I would not have blown up the amount of accounts I did when I first started out about 20 years ago. So if you're new uh, or you're in the middle and you just don't want to blow up your account and you want to save your money, which I think it's a good thing, uh, make sure you uh, um, check that course out. Again, it's 100% free. You don't need a credit card. All you need to do is provide me with an email address, all right? So if that's something you're interested in, definitely head on over to our website, shortmetina.com. Sign up, become a member. Thank you for listening. And as always, thank you for the support. It is Friday, so TGIF. Enjoy your weekend. Um, I'm crying. I'm not going to be with my daughter. Her senior trip. I have a senior. I'm so excited. Um, first time she's actually away. No, it's not the first time she's away without me. Away without me, without sort of a family member with her. But I'm excited for her, uh, her senior trip. Um, I hope she has fun. Anyway, uh, so anyway, so yeah, definitely enjoy your weekend. Uh, stay safe, and I'll talk to you here on Monday.